Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Ari Ben Shushan for Two Cents Podcast. We have the tefillah episode. This one is so close to my heart. I've been a student of tefillah for the past over 20 years, teaching Shimon Esrei, really trying to figure out the ins and outs, the sensitivities of it. And I want to really share that knowledge with you. Uh, Yassi and I go through all different ideas of how to daven, of why we have to use somebody else's script. Why can't we just speak to Hashem in our own voice? And honestly, who said you can't? This is really going to be a take home. This is one that's going to resonate with you, I think, for a very long time afterwards. And it's really in thanks to our wonderful sponsor. Sponsor. Whoa. You know what? I'm going to keep that one in. You know what? Gewalt. A yid falls down, he gets back up. Z C K foundation for giving us the ability to spread this Torah throughout the world and to our wonderful brothers at Yad La'achem that they give us the ability to have that schos to spread Yad La'achem's message and to give everybody else the incredible opportunity to be a shotaf to be a partner in the wonderful wonderful work that they do we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the show but right now let's get into our tefillah episode Hi everybody, this is Ari Ben Shushan. And this is Yassi Ben Shushan. And this is the Two Cents Podcast. Brought to you and powered by Meaningful Minute. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Two Cents Podcast. Um, now I was going to say welcome back to another episode of Meaningful Minute. Like in my mind, Yas, I was like, powered by Meaningful Minute, and then I tripped over my own thoughts, and I completely, if everybody can see in my brain what just happened right now, I just knocked things out, knocked over a few chairs, like a vase just crashed on the floor, so I meant to say, in my brain, I meant to say, welcome back to Two Cents, powered by the Meaningful Minute. Um, Baruch Hashem, here we are. Uh, This is going to be a class that I personally love. I love this class. This is a class on tefillah. Um... Tefillah is, it's just an amazing thing that we get to speak to Hashem, obviously. And um, this class, I want to explore different concepts of it, different ideas. And uh, I don't know why, but I'm just feeling as if an elation of even talking about tefillah makes me feel just in a higher place. You know, yes, can you imagine, let's go the opposite way. When kids ask, oh, what do you need tefillah for? Can you imagine a life without tefillah? I, I realize, can you imagine a life of having nobody who really can make a difference to talk to? Right. You know, sometimes it's good. It's good to speak to a wife. It's good to speak to a parent. When you're going through bad stuff, it's good to talk to them to just unload. But can you imagine never in your life having Hashem, who you know runs everything, Imagine not having Hashem to be able to unload to and to say, Hashem, you're really the one. I can't imagine a life like that. I can't imagine an existence in which I can't speak to the one who's in charge of everything and just go and post my complaints and just go and say, maybe we can make it better. By the way, it's not even posting my complaints. It's just sometimes, it's just like, sometimes, I think in my old age, this has been happening a lot more. And I think, you know... uh, a, a person will be like, well, I have this person and that, my Rebbe, my wife, my mom, my mom. There are certain times in your life that you are completely and absolutely alone. Completely and absolutely alone. And in that moment, when you realize in that moment that it's not true, and the Rabbi Shalom is there, sitting with you right there, right there, like not, not floating around, like... He's right there staring at you and holding your hand and you get to talk to him. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I, I cannot fathom how a person operates without that. Or by the way, how a person operates the other way. So if you want to say that people don't believe or, or want to ignore it or want to, that's one thing. What about the people who do believe, but believe that he's not sitting there. He's just standing there going, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like you. I don't like you one bit. Like that that God that they have in there, that rebundance of that that's horrible. I, I don't I definitely that's don't know worse. how those people exist how those people get through their day. Yeah. But I don't even know how the other guys get through their that's day. Something that, it's uh, it's so really, deep, uh, it's so intrinsic. Bad. And and by the way, that's that's the real deal. That everything's stripped away. That's the real deal. That connection with the Rabbanishalam, that's that's where we hope to get to with tefillah 
Absolutely. So and let's uh, you, yeah, go ahead. No, um, I I I did want to say that um, my connection over here is a little bit uh, weak, so hopefully we'll ah. uh, continue. But if we should get uh, yeah, but Baruch Hashem, we have this communication. You know, let's take it from the beginning. When Hashem created everything, Hashem said that what's a world without a man who's going to ask for things? You know, Hashem said that if I don't have an Adam to be mitpalel, to pray for rain, to pray to make a world happen, meaning Hashem said, what's a world without a relationship? That, that's, right. that's really the focus of it. And when you look in the Ramchal in the second uh, chapter, he says that Hashem made this world to give the greatest good, which is Hashem himself, to things outside of Hashem, whatever that means. Um, but to give, and to give means to have a relationship. Right. Tefillah is about a relationship. You know, right. so much so that the Nesivas Yaisher, he said something so beautiful. He said that the main part of Tefillah is to Davin, is to have a relationship with Hashem, is to know you're speaking to Hashem. And the outcome of it, the whether you get healed or don't get healed, whether you get forgiven or don't get forgiven, he's like, that's almost secondary to it. Right. He explained that the reason why, listen to the mm. beautiful, the reason why Hashem made the ability to ask for things and sometimes you get answers, sometimes you don't, is because, look, if you never got answered, you'd never talk to him. And if you always got answered, so then it's not even a tefillah, it's almost like a spoiled kid. So therefore, you have this in-between place where Hashem said, a relationship is one in which you're going to talk to me, and you're talking to him to get close to me. And if you get answered, great. If you don't get answered, at least we have a relationship. Right. But it's a relationship builder. And, I mean, people have to learn to constantly be speaking to Hashem. Lefi the Ramban, that is the Doi Raisa. The Ramban says, he argues on the Rambam. The Rambam says that maybe you can find the Doi Raisa inside the three times a day of davening. The Ramban says that the Doi Raisa is that when uh, when you went out, when you're going out to fight your enemy, that you call out the Chatzaitzris, that they called out to Hashem. He says, the Doi Raisa of Tefillah is you yell out to Hashem when you're in a place of pain. Rav Berkowitz said that that could happen 50 times, 100 times. It can happen as many times a day where you're feeling that need and you call out to Hashem, a mitzvah Doi Raisa, because obviously it's a mitzvah Doi Raisa. How can it not be? If Hashem created the whole world for that purpose and that reason, then of course Hashem wants you to go and talk to him. Now, yes, the answer, the question to this, the emails we get is going to be, yeah, but he doesn't answer me. Right. I'm talking to him, but he's not answering me. So I'd like to address that in a minute, but it looked like you had something on your mind. No, 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 good. It's that or I talk to him, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't answer. I talk to him, but he doesn't talk back. It's a one-sided right. conversation. Right, and people feel almost as if, um, like, they're looking for that answer. It's like, right. but then I saw, I said, Hashem, show me a sign, and a leaf fell off of a tree, and I knew he was speaking to me. And sometimes, to be honest, um, I find that may also be not so healthy, where yeah. you're kind of translating into yeah, I the mean, effect. you're humanizing a relationship with an infinite being. I mean, right. that's, not, that's not how that works. You can't, you can't do that. You can't humanize that relationship. That's not what it is. It's just, it's a relationship so, unlike any other relationship you have. You cannot, and, and you're doing yourself a disservice by comparing our relationship with Hashem to every other relationship we have. Like he's doing things to us. That's the big one I got. He, he did this to me. Why is God doing this to me? That, that's not how that works. That's not how that whole idea works. You're 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 tying him with like this epithet of him being uh, um you know vindictive towards you or or able to be vindictive towards you or or jealous or angry or whatever it is. But he's not a person. We call him a he because you're making Hashem too yeah. small. Right. You're, make, you're making Hashem you're limiting way too him. small. So so uh, so what is Hashem? Hashem wants one thing. Hashem wants the best thing for you. He wants the best life for you. He wants you to talk it out with him. He wants you to understand details. He wants you to understand ideas. He wants you to understand concepts. Of course, that's what he wants. And as far as Hashem answering back to you, to be honest, there was a time historically that Hashem did answer. There was a time historically during the first Beit HaMikdash and before that where you had Bas calls coming from Shemayim, where you had Nevi'im who can go and talk to you, and you had the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol that can go and speak to you as well. Why, there were times. Yeah, but why stop there? 
I'm saying I, we do. We, I have to explain this to a lot of people. A lot of people don't know this. I have to. I find myself explaining this to a lot of specifically teenagers, but people in general who don't know. No, adults. A lot of times it's adults who don't know this. Go all the way back. The way everything was meant to be, we all would have be having conversations with Hashem as Adam Arishan. And, and even if you go further down, I'm saying if you take a, a, a Nayak's times, right? Everything was perfect in Nayak's times. You picked the, uh, nothing rotted. You picked an apple off of a tree. Another one grew in its place, the Medrash says, and just waited there. Never fell, never anything. It was always perfect weather. There was never, that's why, that's why the, the marble was such a big deal because it never rained. It never rained like that. It rained at the perfect time when no one was outside. When no one, Everything was perfect. Everything was. All those questions of, well, why didn't he do it like this? He did. He did. It was like that. Where we are now, it's not. And the same way we com- complain that like generations before us were uh, more responsible or simpler or smarter, or, I don't know, whatever you want to say about it, is, is, it's the same exact thing. Is that there, there's a certain Yerida and we're in it and, and we are where we are, which is fine. But the idea, it's just lack of information when people are saying that like, why didn't God create it like this? The answer is, is that he did. Uh, he very much did. The answer is, is that like very many questions that are asked, the answer is right. Meaning, uh, you know, people ask, hey, how come Hashem would, if you want to give us the greatest good, then how come Hashem would have us die? That's not good. You're ending. And the answer is right. Hashem agrees with you. Guess what? He created the world without death. And then when Adam sinned, Hashem right. said that now you created death. There are very many things. You're right. If Hashem wanted an open relationship with us, so then he created a world in which there was a talk, there was a relationship. But guess what? Back in those times, it was also Avodah Zarah because if you were having an open relationship of talk to Hashem, then there had to be free will. There had to be choice. There had to be something else there that would challenge you uh, because if not, then you can't get any reward if there's no challenge. So Hashem made this concept of Avodah Zarah. And guess what? Humanity. This is the Gemara over there in Sanhedrin on uh, on on Samach Dalad Amad Aleph 64, where humanity, where the Anshik Nesad Agadayla said to Hashem after the destruction of the first base of Mikdash that we can't have this Avodah Zarah anymore. It's too much yeah. for us. And so therefore Hashem said, okay. But along with that, Hashem sent them the Yetzirah of Avodah Zarah. It came as a fire of a lion cub from the place of the Kodesh Agadayla. And they, went, they put it in the ground, they got rid of it. But with that, with the cancel of Avodah Zarah also came the cancel of open miracles. And along with that came the cancel of open talk with Hashem. Right. And interestingly enough, it was the same Ajik Nessus Hagadayla who went and set up Tefillah of Shmona Esrei. So I want to talk about that now for a minute. Right. Meaning. Well, Lahavdil also, just before I get, because I, I, I know where you're going here. Lahavdil, um, um, you know, that famous story of the Pavarotti, right? When uh, he went into the bank and didn't have his ID. And they're like, well, uh, how do we know? He's like, I'm Pavarotti. And they're like, what's, you know, we, you need ID. And like he tells the teller, the story never happened, but he tells the teller to come outside and he points at his massive billboard in the middle of Times Square and he's like, and it's his face with the name, you know, Pavarotti after it. And he goes, that's my ID, you know. I, because, yes, because there are so many banks on Times Square. On Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> and because a teller just walked out into the middle of Times Square with him. Right. He's like, oh, he's probably taking me somewhere good. Let me follow right. this. This Have you ever seen Pavarotti? That man does not look stable, right? <laughs> and he was singing the entire thing the whole time. Like, it's not, so just like, sir, you seem like a clown, has a lot of handkerchiefs. You keep on pulling him out. So many handkerchiefs. One of your eyebrows just came back. <laughs> right. So... But the answer is, is that you're right. Hashem doesn't respond with words to us. He's responding all around us all the time. This is the Rambam over there that says that you got to look around you. Look around you. Look at how much, look how much awesome there is in the world. It's incredible. He's responding to you every minute of every single day. The problem is that he's talking to us all day, 24 hours, seven days a week. He's talking to us. And and it became background noise, so we just don't hear it anymore. Again, you're saying I, 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 no, no, right, right, no. So uh, this answer that Yossi's giving is absolutely true for those people who are looking for it. But a lot of times, my students have all sometimes even felt that that answer was like a cop out because they felt like it was a nice answer, which it isn't a nice answer. It's a true answer. Right. The true answer is, is that Hashem, Mom, just speaking to us all the time. Ah, but Lamai said there was a time in history where Hashem sent out right. Baskals and Hashem sent everything and everything else. And so this comes now to this next part, which is that 
Um, I once got this, a question from a student of mine who was being a an advisor in NCSY on some trip, you know, somewhere. And he sent me like an all of a panic. And he's like, a kid just asked me a great question. I don't know have the answer. I said, sure, what's up? He said, the kid said that if tefillah is so important, um, how come I'm using somebody else's script? Meaning, why am I speaking according to the words of the Anshik Why one. can't I just speak to Hashem all by myself? Like, why do I need their words to go and to use that as a relationship. And um, so I want to make the question even stronger. Like, have you ever gotten in trouble in school and the teacher says, okay, I want you to go over to the kid and say you're sorry. So you go over to the kid and say, I'm sorry. The kid's like, no, no. I want you to say like you mean it. You have to mean that you're sorry. Okay, I mean that I'm sorry. You know, like, no, that doesn't work. Going and telling somebody to say something to Hashem, telling them to have a script, it doesn't work because it's somebody else's words. And so the kid's question was, why don't we have our own words? And so I want to really open up an idea over here, an idea in tefillah. The idea in tefillah is, is that, number one, nobody ever said you can't use your own words. Right. Nobody ever said that you can't be speaking to Hashem the whole day. You know, I mean, honestly, I really think that my grandmother, who lived and passed away before Bluetooth was invented, um, had a yeah. Bluetooth in her ear to Hashem all day. She didn't stop. Mama didn't stop speaking yeah. to Hashem. It was a dialogue. All it was a day. dialogue. What was that? It was a dialogue. They had a dialogue running. She she would just right. update him, she, like talk to him. She yeah. She, she would just, just just be like, and and sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad, sometimes it was jokes. Yeah. <laughs> she would she would crack Hashem up. She would just right. like have <laughs> jokes and she would just laugh. No, no, she, she, she'd be like, <laughs> I said, you know, and, and it was amazing. So there was this kind of a, so number one, you could speak to Hashem all the time from that place, but let's go a little bit deeper. The Anche Knesset Haggadayla went and wrote the Shimona Esrei for us. There was one time that a student of mine had stopped by the yeshiva with a certain sitter that he was told to give to his uncle who was a Kabbalist. I looked in the Siddur and over there, it was this incredible Siddur that had all of the different connotations of Hashem's name hidden inside all the different places of Shimon Esrei. Incredibly, Hashem's name is hidden in so many different places, in so many different ways, so many different ideas. If you ever give a look at a Siddur HaRashash, something along those lines, a Siddur HaRamchal, you're going to see that each tefillah, each paragraph is pages and pages of Hashem's name. And all of that is hidden inside the Anshe Knesset and Gedola, meaning that, Hashem created the world. Hashem looked into the Torah and created the world. What this means is, is in actuality, Hashem looked into the letters. Hashem created the world. The fiber of reality is created with the letters of the Torah. With Lashon HaKodesh. Hashem, when Adam was told to name the animals, he saw the word Kelev, Chaf Lamed Vet, and he called it a dog because Hashem created the world in matrix form with those letters. That's the reality of things. That's what affects things inside the upper spheres of the world because they're all created with these letters. The Anshik Nasar Gadola said, we have to go and give people the ability to affect the world in the deepest way possible. Lashon HaKodesh is the ability in which a person can affect the reality of the fibers that this world has been created with in the deepest way possible with these words because hidden inside these words are names of Hashem, are permutations of different ideas and concepts that are beyond the human mind but amongst the Antrik Nesagadola were Nevi'im, they had prophets, in which they were able to kind of slip into Atachon in Ladam Dat. They are able to slip into all these different things, the concepts and ideas. So use those words, use that script, because that's the script that affects a f- inf- infinity. Those yeah. are the words that Lashon HaKodesh are the letters that are literally moving and shaking different aspects of reality because it was created with those letters. But nobody ever said you can't make it your own. And this is really what I want to get to. Make tefillah your own. Make it your own. I've been a student of Shemun Esri. Yes, you know this about me for over 20 years now. Um, On Torney time, I have over 40 classes on just Shemun Esri because it was something that I got to know from a young age, from like 18 or 19, that I said like, wow, there are worlds over here. My neshama really spoke to it. Um, if Yossi's neshama is connected to Shabbos, like Yossi likes to say, I feel like mine is connected to Shemun Esri. In that way that... There's just infinity going on inside there. So you know, once you know the words, once you know the language, once you learn the art of conversing with God, and those are the words of Shimon Esrei, I almost feel like I'm answered every single day. I almost feel like because I spoke in his lingo, 
I feel, yes, and I want to say this, and I haven't seen this anywhere, but I think that this is true. I feel that built in Lashon HaKodesh is not just you saying it, but it's Hashem's answer to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, you know, if people That's are asking, huge. I don't hear Hashem's answer, it's because you don't know how to speak Lashon HaKodesh. Right. If you know how to That's speak huge. Lashon HaKodesh to Hashem, inside those letters, inside the verbiage, because I feel it, I, I know, uh, sometimes in Shema Kol, <laughs> you just, in Atachonet Lotham Das, there's a conversation. Uh, you know, sometimes it's such a therapy session for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, that, that's, what, that's what it is for me. And we're going to take a pause now in order to talk to our incredible esteemed guest, the Heliga, Reb Nassanel Gans from Yad Lachem. So, Reb Nassanel, we're talking about tefillah over here. I would love to hear your take. Like, what's your angle? Yad Lachem, tefillah. Let me hear. So I'll tell you, I, I say this at, at, at every event that I speak at, and I, and I genuinely believe this. You know, of course, we always talk about, of course, we need funds, and we do. But I believe just as important, if not more important, is we need your tefillah. I've asked this many times, and I really want to ask again for the Two Cent Podcast listeners. This applies to both the women and the men. Please down for us. Down for Yad Lachem that they're successful in what they do. Down that we don't need to come on to rescuing a woman. That she doesn't end up there. That they're safe where they are. When women light candles Friday night and you have in mind your children, please have in mind the children of Yad Lachem that are stuck there need to be saved. Uh, when you're not married yet, you're a teenage girl and you're saying to them, have Yad Lachem in mind. A guy during Shema Kaleinu, Lekein Etzar, any time, have in mind Yad Lachem. It, doesn't cost you anything, but it really does something. The Chazanish teaches us, he said, he writes that davening is a physical pe'ula, it's ishtadlus. So I want to beseech the two cent podcast listeners to please daven for all the people that we need to help rescue, and daven for our success. Wow. I, I, R- R- is, is, is it true? I remember seeing this. Yad La'achem takes names for tefillah for free, like, like not like give us money and we do tefillah. I, is, am I remembering right? You touched, I, on a, you touched on a very important point, and it's something I'm very proud of also. For many years, we've arranged the women to go, who were rescued to go to Davon Mekayim Yisak Doshim, and for Tzadikim to Davon for them at the Kaisel Amuka. And we've always, people have said, hey, send the name. So I decided I can't stand the concept of charging to Davon for someone. It really bothers me on a personal level. So I went great big campaigns. To this day, we take names for free. It's not a question. Go to saveworld.org and there's the option there to give in your name for tefillah, for a fushalema, for shalom bayis, for panasa, for whatever that you want and the name will be given to Amuka or the Kaisal. There's a whole list of wherever they're diving for at that time for absolutely free. There's no minimum donation required. Legit. At any time, by the wow. way, if you're watching this five years from now, it's always the policy. You're simply filling your name and information. You can give a name for Tila for absolutely free. The same thing I'm asking of the Two Cent Podcast listeners, right? Tila is a f- it's free for you to down for Yad Lachem and for the Tamid Chav of Yad Lachem to down for you. And that's a request Beautiful. that I have. Beautiful. But you know what? I'm not happy with that. Meaning I want to tell my own listeners, guys, definitely give the Tila, but... Tzedaka, right? Yas Tvila, it's true, right? That's it. Ma'avir Metrar Gezeira. So let's let's storm Shemaim with both Tvila and Tzedaka together. Saveaworld.org. The Halik Reb Nassanel, thank you so, so much. And now, Reb Nassanel, what? Now what? <laughs> Back to our podcast. And everyone always wants to know what to add. Like what Yehi Ratzin can I put in? First, first realize it's the Yehi Ratzin. It's like it's like the guys who want to learn Kabbalah but not Kamara. It's like first realize that like the Yehi Ratzin is there already. These are them. Okay, you want to do more things? That's fine. But but realize how how impactful and amazing this is. And like you said, you know we learn anyone who says that they can't that they don't want to read from someone else's script, which is a fair question. It's a valid question. I'm not taking that away. My my point is and. You, you've not studied tefillah. You, you've not went through these words and made it your own. If you do, So I think I, I think you should say the, um, I, I don't know if you're allowed to, I don't know if you can, I think you should say the uh, the Atachainain story of, uh, of of one of your Rebbeim. Uh, oh, so I mean, yeah, I, it's just a beautiful story. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say his name just because I don't want it to be hassled. Right, that's what uh, I was saying. That's I, I don't want to say any names. I don't want to say any Like I'm obviously one Bittal Tariq, but, but, but a great, great rabbi that I had in Bet Midrash who lives in America. We'll just say it like that. Um, that, you know, and yes, I'm going to I'm gonna preface this by saying that it's funny because in a different time, he said that he had made a deal with Hashem based on Torah. He said because I don't know how to daven. This is what he said about himself. Davening, I, I don't know how to daven. And now, Listen to somebody who claims to know how to daven. Um, 
we uh we, we were having Purim by his house. Uh, this is uh, a bunch of years back, and it's known that he has I don't know, photographic memory. I'm not sure, but you know he he has he finishes shots once a year. Uh, and really really incredible. We ended up by his house um, on Purim day, and it's known that people from the community they all come and they ask him any questions around all of Shas, and he answers with Rishayim Achrayim like literally on the spot on the makom. There was one student of his, a friend of mine, who showed up a little bit drunk. You know, it's Purim, so he was a little bit inebriated. He showed up to the house, and he had grabbed a small shas off of the shelf from the yeshiva. The yeshiva was a few blocks away. This guy went running. I don't know how many volumes he started with. I don't know if he had the whole shas, <laughs> but he, yeah, he must have dropped them alone because like, he came with a few left. He came running into the house. He comes running in, and like... You know, when a drunk guy runs in, he automatically, he gets the presence. You know, he gets the he gets everybody listening to him right quick. And he knocks everybody off. He drops the few remaining Gemaras on the table. And he says, um, Brett picks one up. He says, Rebbe, what does it say in Mesechus Menachus, Tafchav Dalet Amad Aleph, 10 lines from the bottom? What does it say? And this Rebbe just he's like okay are you just being silly i you know come on you know somebody asked me a question so somebody else tried to ask a question now we all know the superhuman strength and the superhuman abilities of a drunk you know where they come from question so yeah yeah with a question that he he gets laser focused there's nothing else in the world right now except for his question and the person he's asking it to and there's nothing that can keep them the guy's almost like an assassin a hired assassin (laughs) that no matter what he's going to make his hit and so he's like rebbe he just yelled again. What does that say? Menachos Chavdalam and Aleph, ten lines on the bottom. So, oh, you're being silly. But this Rebbe saw that this guy wasn't taking it on for an answer. And he was getting very physical, this kid. So finally, the Rebbe said, which Gemara was it? And then, woo <laughs> everything <laughs> stopped. Everybody stopped to take a listen. And their kid was like, Menachos, which Daf Chavdalam and Aleph, ten lines on the bottom. And I'll never forget this. We're all standing around. And the Rebbe covered his eyes. And he's like thinking, and we all zoomed in. It was one of those small Gemaras. We all like crept in to look at that Gemara. And he just, in Aramaic, he just said that one line of Gemara. He just ratted off just that one line of the Gemara. When you see a human being doing that, you lose all feeling in your legs (laughs) and you fall down to the floor. That's just what you do. Your legs turn into jelly. I didn't know that until it happened to me, but that's what happens to you. We all fell on the floor. (laughs) And, and 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 we're like shot. We're like it, it 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 happened. It just happened. We got up from the floor. We're looking at him, and he got very emotional. He started crying. And he said, "You want to know how I remember everything that I remember?" You and he started banging on the table. You want to know how? He said, "Because every day by aten atachonin ladam das, I daven to Hashem to give me brains like my life depends on it, because I know that my life depends on it." And yes, I'm happy you said this story because there's his answer. Meaning, Rabotai, his answer. I'm sorry, I just went into speech mode with that word Rabotai, but I just did. But Rabotai, his answer was the fact that he knows that to be able to say the 10th line of the Gemara, Menachas, and Chafdal, and Aleph on his own, that was just a pipe dream. But when he davened to Hashem like his life depended on it, and he felt like he was having a conversation, he also felt like he was answered. Now, mm. I don't want people to walk around and start sending me, I wasn't answered. I didn't feel. Stop. Nobody ever told you that in life you get to have feelings of Hashem in you. Nobody ever guaranteed that to you. Hashem never guaranteed you that you're going to feel his answers. You're going to feel. Nobody told you that. So stop saying as if you deserve it and stop saying as if it has to come to you. It's not true. It doesn't have to come to you. But right. open up your eyes because it's there either way. Right. Open up your heart to it because it's there either way. But so, learn to have a conversation with an infinite Hashem and then you'll begin to understand it. So this to me this to me is also one of the big concepts in tefillah is that people view tefillah as like a, not an ATM machine. or a, They'll say, I never ask for anything, but this time I ask for something. Is that an asking for things? That's not what this is. That, that's such a small part of davening. It's just a small concept in davening. First of all, even when you have a Yehi Ratzin where you're asking for something, the first words are like, Yehi Ratzin, let it be your will, Hashem. What are you saying? You're signing a disclaimer immediately. If it's not your will, though, please don't do this thing. Please. Because you know so much better. If I'm asking for a Ferrari and you know I'm going to kill someone with that Ferrari, please don't give it to me. 
Please. It's he's saving us left and right, and we're like, get off of me. As the uh, video so I said one time of like uh, this guy gave someone this guy overdosed, and another guy gave him Narcan, and he wakes him up, and the guy who he saved his life, and the guy wakes up and starts beating the guy who gave him the Narcan. He's like, you ruined my high. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> we're Incredible. dying. What are, you what are you doing? What are you doing? It's the same idea. We're saying to Hashem, you didn't answer me. It's like, I, just, I need to lay down. I just saved your life. I just saved your life and about five other people's. Like, don't, don't, don't underestimate what's happening here and how big it is. But to me, I think dominating is one of the healthiest things a person can do. Yeah, I was uh, reading this uh, study in, uh, I was reading a study. And one of the things they said is that they, they were listing um, some of the healthiest habits that a person can, can adopt for themselves. And one of them was to take mindfulness three times a day for 20 minutes a day. Three times a day wow. for 20 minutes a day to take mindfulness. And they started That's describing, hilarious. Ari, what mindfulness is. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, are you talking about Davin and Shemana Esther? Hang on a second. Are you? Because it's saying... What I'm doing matters, but not enough. It doesn't matter enough for me to stress outside of what the universe wants to give me, of what the universe has in mind for me. And I'm, I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. You're just, you're davening mincha right now. Don't, don't, right. don't just pawn that off as your idea. Stop universe. I- yeah, don't yeah. pawn that off as your idea. Don't pawn that off as your idea. You're in Landau right now translating from an art scroll <laughs> into this article right now. So what do you... Some of the most healthy ideas that a person can hold and have exists in our davening. And I always say, people say, you know, I want to start focusing. I'm going to, I'm going to take Elikai, uh, uh, Elikai Nitzar, and I'm going to start uh, focusing on what I want. I always tell my Talmudim, if you're going to start focusing on one tefillah in, um, in Shemona Esrei, start focusing on Maidim. Like, really think about Maidim. You will leave your davening a different person. To try to really think to yourself, what is it that you are being maida to Hashem? What is it that you're really being maida? And we're we're hyper focused right now on Shmon Esrei, but it, it's all over. You know what? A person who and this, this is another uh, a study. Person who wakes up and in the morning before they touch their phone, before they do anything, feels gratitude. The first thing they feel in the morning is gratitude. Oh boy, how does that start their day? And we w- wake up with our maida ani lefanecha, with our maida ani lefanecha. You have to realize if you truly adopt tefillah as as a goal, true kavan and tefillah. I'm not talking about the kavan and rizal and all that. I'm just talking about focusing on it while you do it. If you truly take that on, your life will change. You you're going to start showing up to davening with nothing to really ask for, because you're going to start saying, Hashem, I just. I'm in awe. I'm in awe. I am. I'm in awe. I'm in awe that I'm talking to you right now. I'm in awe that we're making time for this, you and I. You, you, you're, it's going to be such a petty thing, petty idea in your head to be sitting there asking and asking and trying to make a cheshpen and ask for this one to have it so that you can get... I'm not saying these things aren't real and I'm not saying there isn't a time to, to daven and ask for things. And, and yes, and Chana, and sorry, Menu, and they, they had to ask. I'm not saying not. My concept is, is, that there, is that asking for things or receiving things through tefillah is such a small part of the gain and growth and beauty that we get from davening. It's yep. such a small part of it. Hey everybody, so thrilled to be doing another season of Two Cents with my brother Yossi. But I gotta tell you, there's so much more going on. You need to download that Meaningful Minute app right away, ASAP. You gotta do this schnell, as they say in Yiddish. You gotta do this right away because there's bonus content and there's so much more content that both... Reb Yossi and I put up, but there's so much more. I mean, you got to see Rabbi Majeski. I mean, you got to go out there, see Charlie Harari. There's an entire world in that Meaningful Minute app that's going to bring you closer to the Abishta. So please, right now, get that app, download it, and really enjoy becoming so much closer to Hashem. Yeah, you know, the the, the Maharal writes that um, there's really only one mitzvah that has schar holicha. It has schar of going. It has schar mm. of, um, you know, just literally 
going from one place to the next, and that is going towards Tefillah. You get Schar for going to a shul to go into the Bet And uh, the Maral over here, he says, I don't get... Why don't you get Schar for going to Sheikh Alul of an Esrig? Like, why don't you get Schar right. Alicha for, for, for other Maral things? Maral and Amis over there, yeah. And, 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 there, and, and he says something so deep. He says, and also, should I try to live in a house that's far from a shul? Because if I'm getting mitzvahs on the way, yeah, should I go I further? You know, does that make? What if somebody lives right right next to you? Me to tell me, zok the heligam maral. No, you're missing it. Please don't look at it so simple. He says, schar halicha is not how far you go, and schar halicha is not so much to travel. Schar halicha, he says, is simply that you are holech. You leave the rest of the world behind when you go into your shul. Ooh. Like you, the schar, the reward is being a. Uh, a halicha, somebody who's going, and you leave the world behind that you have a halicha from the world. It was world a mic drop shul. moment in that share right. of the Maral that day. The Maral, it was a mic was drop like, moment. Wow. Everybody sure, certainly said to Maral, you can take a vacation out for a few days. We just need, <laughs> because, because we need that time, you know, to be able to. But let's understand that. Let's understand what tefillah was put in for. So we're going to jump over to the Ramchal now, that he tells us that Hashem put tefillah so you come in with the maral originally, leave the world behind to go to your shachars. And when you come inside, so we left the world behind. You left all your anxiety, your anguish. And like Yossi, we were saying so beautifully, I'm coming in thankfully. I'm coming in appreciating that there's life. And I come in, and now it says the Ramchal that before you get involved in the day, before you get the kochav yadi, before you get your hands involved inside the world each and every single day, Hashem created a therapy, much like the different studies you were quoting, where... I'm going to speak to Hashem. I'm going to acknowledge it's all from Him. I'm going to acknowledge that I really don't play much of a role inside it. And I'm going to acknowledge that the things that I'm doing really should be towards you, Hashem. My relationship should actually, through the day today, be something kadosh. I should separate myself from this physical world. And I should get closer to you today. All right, I have to be an electrician, so I'll go do that. I have to be a lawyer, so I guess I'll run over to court today and defend somebody. But ultimately... My entire drive is supposed to be from what Shacharis, a reality that it's given right. me. And the reality that Shacharit has given me is this concept of chesed, of you're so good, you've given me so much. I want to reciprocate. I want to have that. I want to be alive with that. That's the concept of a tefillah that really, it just, it echoes throughout a person's day completely. And in the tefillah itself, the way that the Mepharshim build it up, we know that there are four worlds there is, we're in Asiya, then it goes up to Yitzira, then Beria, then you get up to Atzilut, and that the way the Shimon Esri is broken down, this is what I'm telling you now, is from uh, the amazing book, if anybody wants to know, uh, just an amazing book, The World of Tefillah by Rabbi Monk, is just something so unbelievable, you know, like things we've gone through for years to go through, what he explains is based on the Pusik from Yaakov Avinu uh, by the latter, that we start out by the um, Birchad HaShachar and the Karbanot, that is the world of Asiya. And then you jump up to Psuke the Zimra, you get to the world of Yetzira, and then you jump up to the Birchas of Shema and Shema, you jump into the world of Beria, and then you come up to Shimon Esri in the world of Atzilut. You're actually traversing worlds. You're actually jumping from level to level. It really is something. You know, people who come back from a Yom Kippur, and they say they had such a great davening. What made it so great? What was that thing that made it such a reality? It's because they felt that they too oifed. They felt that they, I actually did. I was, I was fasting. I sang. I cried. I did. I feel like I momish accomplished something. And in those moments, they feel like they even got answered from Hashem. They felt like there was a recognition from God and almost a pat on their shoulder from Hashem saying, I'm proud of you. You did good, kid. And a person can go into not just Yom Kippur, but you can go into Shachras, leave the world behind like the Maral, then understand like the Ramchal that you're being Mekadosh yourself from the whole world today, and then take on that understanding that Rabbi Monk has, which is to traverse the four worlds to stand in front of Hashem. Now, the reason why I said these four names is for one reason. Ari Ben Shushan, I'm not such a smart guy, but I know how to just grab different ideas and make a reality from it. I took from the Maral, took from the Ramchal, took from Rabbi Monk, and I made a reality of what I try to make my Shacharit every single day. It is incumbent upon every single person, anybody who has a question about Tefillah, anybody who has this negativity of, I don't feel answered, I don't feel like I spoke, you didn't delve deep enough. I'm sorry, you don't respect Tefillah. You just don't respect it enough. I feel... 
the same way, if a person was going to be hired as the guy to deactivate bombs, if you were hired by the SWAT team to deactivate bombs, then certainly you're going to learn everything there is to know about um, right. the acids, all about all the different bomb-making capabilities, about all the different starters, about go- about everything. Because step number one, they tell you in bomb school, I should know because yeah, see, I know how to deactivate yeah, bombs, obviously. Step number one, they tell you is that the moment you don't respect the bomb is the moment that it kills you. And I feel with tefillah, it's the same exact thing. The moment you don't respect tefillah is the moment you're going to ask that question. Right. It's the moment you're going to come and you're going to say, I don't, you didn't respect it enough. If you one of those are true. Enough, yeah. That, that, I, I, or maybe all of it. <laughs> maybe all of it. Um, that the moment you don't respect it is the moment that you should hop. You need to get more of an understanding and feel. Right. Like what you were saying before, I think is is such an important point, but it has to be made. You know, there's no, uh, like Tyra in general, but there's no end to really appreciating and understanding tefillah. There's no like, I got it. You got to have a Seder for tefillah. You got to have a Seder for understanding tefillah. There's no, you know... You know, it, it, there's so much Kabbalah behind it. There's so much intrinsic. There's so there's just intricate details to it. There's so much there. There's so much there. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't connect to tefillah, and this is this is a little hack for everything, but definitely for tefillah. The if you don't connect to tefillah, a great hack to start connecting to tefillah is learning about it is starting to learn about it. If you learn about it, you will develop a new appreciation for it, knowing certain things. I, I, I had big issues with Elenu, right? You know, being able to, to end the davening. And one Rosh Hashanah, I, I just took upon myself, I'm going to learn I'm gonna learn about Elenu. Elenu is unbelievable. Elenu is unbelievable. Every aspect of it. Um, Alkein Nekavelecha is Achan from Yeshua's times. He wrote Alkein Yeshua wrote Elenu. He wrote Alkein Nekavelecha. And what's the and what's the 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 contrast of it? It's amazing. It's amazing when you learn it, and 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 you develop not only a new appreciation for it and for where it's from in general, but a new appreciation for what it means and what it means to you. What now you can put out there with this is is so unbelievable, and it's and it starts yes, it starts with translations, it starts with just the most simple of translation, and then work your way up from there. Understanding Maidaani, understanding Berchas Shachar, just just understand Berchas Shachar. Berchas Shachar is beautiful. You're selling yourself short if you're trying to daven, just you know ticking the box three times a day. You know, it, it's it's really such a such a, a, a shud to do that. And I I would just finish off saying um, I, I I'm not exactly sure where we're holding here time wise, um, but I I the, the, there was um it was something that I know helped me a lot. And what helped me a lot is is that tefillah more than anything else, I think is meant for a person to be able to find his own shot or his own voice his own understanding and what he's asking. And so I just want to take what Yas was saying over here and to maybe build on to that, which is that um, they, they one time they uh, asked, uh, uh, what's his name? They asked a very famous artist, um, Picasso, if I remember correctly, that they said to him, your drawings are so odd. Your paintings are so weird. If you've ever seen a Picasso painting, it's a little bit off. Mm. And like, what's shot inside that? Especially since... When there's a picture, when he was about 14 years old, he sat in front of, I think, a church or something, a building, a beautiful building, and he drew the same picture of that building four different times, one, two, three, four, and the only difference was how the light touched it in different parts of the day. And it almost looked like a photograph, each one. So if he had such ability, if he had such capability, so Picasso, why you, why don't, why don't you do that? Why don't you go and um, make lifelike? Why don't you make real image type thing. Why are you going with this um, kind of odd way of going about his art? And it was explained, I read this somewhere, it was explained that Picasso said, step one is you have to learn up all of the artists from the past. You have have to learn them up. You have to learn up Michelangelo. You have to learn up Leonardo. You have to learn up all the four Ninja Turtles. You have to learn up each one. Learn up Monet. You have to learn up Rembrandt. Right, you, you, you have to learn up the mahalchum of how they went about what they did. And then he said something beautiful. And then he said, and then you rebel. And then you say, now I can express my own feelings in my own certain way. 
Wow. I think tefillah is the one place left where every Jew gets to express his inner Picasso. Every Jew gets to express his own masterwork of how he wants to talk to Hashem. Look, not everybody gets to express himself in a Taisvis. Not everybody gets to express himself in a Gemara and Baba Basra and the outcome because, to be honest, you could do the same thing if you had years and years of training, if you had right. years of learning how Gemara, Taisvis, how Rebbe Vegar, how all these nuances work, and that at the end of it, you want to then come with your own Chiddush, you could do that, but it's going to take very many years, very nuanced practices, very sensitive understandings, and a heap of of Siyat Deshmaya, of Atachon and Lamdas, for you to get there. But if you want to begin to express right away, step one, like Yossi said, first you got to learn it up. You have to know what Atachon and you have to know that Goel Yisrael, everybody thinks that the brach of Goel Yisrael is about Mashiach. Wrong. It's not. Right. Rashi over there in Megillah and Yudzayan says, it's about personal redemption. You have that people are suffering from anxiety. People are suffering from their own personal prison. There's a bracha for that. So like Yossi said before, before you start to say, where am I going to talk about in Yul Ratzon? Guess what? The things that you've been pained by, it's over there in your personal uh, galut. And just in case you feel like it's not expressed clear enough, in Hashiva Shoftenu, you know what the words are? V'hasar menu yagon v'anacha, remove from me sorrow and anguish, remove from me depression. I mean, it's all there. And then once you get the base run, the base understanding, and I don't be keep them like pushing my stuff, but if somebody doesn't want to do all this time, it took me 25 years to be able to do as much research as I can. It's 40 sure I'm up on tourney time. Go ahead, please use my um, yeah. all, all the stuff that I've done over there. But at the end of it, once you get a baseline understanding of what the words are, how they're expressing themselves, and don't just rely on Ari Ben obviously. Get another sitter. Get another thing. I own, I don't know how many sitter and how many svarim on sitter to be able to get that clarity. You get to express yourself along the way to say, this is where my voice is. This is how I talk. When you get to talk on your own in tefillah, when you get to express yourself within the words of the Anshay Knesset Hagadola, within the words of what they put forth, there is no more, I, I can't think of a more beautiful union in the world than that, and then you mamish feel like you've been listened to. Right. That's my sign off on this whole concept. Yes, you want to take it away to finish off? Yeah, yeah, just, you know, really quickly. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to defer to you over here. You're more of the, uh, you're definitely more versed and definitely more of the tefillah person and definitely more of the, uh, you know, and particularly more Shimon Esrei. Um, I just, I can only speak for myself and my Talmidim. Um, that have that have spoken to me about this, the amount that your life changes with tefillah is unbelievable, and it doesn't matter if you do it every day already. You need more. You need to go in again. You know, I found God. Right? The 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 what do you call it? you you can find God in in one of a few ways. Okay, you can talk to Hashem one of a few ways when you desperately need to, or or when you're happy. The problem is that, like, I remember one time we were standing with camp in in middle of Great Adventures. In the middle of Great Adventures, we're standing with camp, and uh, we're Davni Mincha in the parking lot over there. And it was raining, and everyone was trying to get out, and everyone was trying to... And I realized, like, all, for anyone who says, or for myself, I was thought, like, you know, why can't I just daven in my own words at my own time, at my own pace? The answer is because I wouldn't be davening right now. I probably wouldn't have davening today at all. Because... It was a great adventure day. I was running around. I was doing that. We still had to make time for Mincha. You still have to make time for him. You got to realize something. This is put into our fiber for a reason. We need this. We need this desperately, and we need it every single day. Now, when you do it, you can choose here. Right? Am I going to communicate with God through joy, or am I only going to communicate when bad things happen? Because that's so difficult to, to, to live that way. And it's so beautiful to live the other way. When we communicate with Hashem through everything, with everything, it is such a worthwhile investment. It is something that will change your life forever. Guys, this has been the Tefillah episode. I am Yassi Ben Shushan. I am Ari Ben Shushan. And you've been listening to the Two Cents Podcast, powered by Meaningful Minute. Have a great day, night, evening, wherever you may be right now within your life. Do that greatly. Have a great minute. Take care.